everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another live class. Um, if you are here, let me know in the comments below. Let me know where you are, um, where you're painting from. I would love to know. And let me know how you all are. Um, it's been a pretty good couple months of the year. I'm excited to uh, roll out the next set of classes. We're almost at the end of um, the, I kind of roll them out in like a two month increments. So I just finalized all of the classes for the next two months, and I'm really excited to share those. But um, yeah, let me know if you're here, where you're painting from, who you're painting with, other than me and everyone else here, obviously. Um, but yeah, recently, um, you might have seen, I don't know if I added it to the description, but uh, I recently got donated a bunch of Fredericks canvases which I'm really excited to use so they were really nice and um, gave me like four boxes of canvases so I'm really excited to use those today um, let's see anything else what other new things are going on um, hi Natalie uh, from Canada a bit nervous with our country right now because God is good um, what's going on in your country right now if you care to share other than COVID, which is everywhere right now, <laughs> still everywhere. People like to say that it's post pandemic. I don't think it's post pandemic. Hello from Calgary. Hello. Hello. Welcome in. Yeah. In San Diego, we've had a bit of a up and down with the weather. Like last week it was like, I feel like it was my, like in the nineties for sure. Um, and then now it's back down to like really cold at night. So I don't know what's going on with the weather. You know, fall spring happens here. <laughs> I am currently, so this is today's traceable. If you are interested in it, um, I can go ahead and post that in the, um, it's also, it's in the description as well, but, um, I will post that in the chat. Um, I will be going over just basic shapes, um, in case you don't have the traceable or didn't want to use it. Um, but yeah, I'm excited just to, I'm excited to paint. I'm always excited to paint. So I'm going to prep my canvas this way. Um, hi Lynn, hi Tanya, how is San Diego today? It is, it's good, 
it's um it's a little cold we went for a walk today and uh, my four-year-old he went for a bike ride and just like in the middle of it it was like cold and barely sprinkling and he was like it's raining <laughs> okay a little dramatic it's not raining it's sprinkling and we'll make our way home but it's a uh, it's not it's a little cold out right now to say the least um, it's been warm and sunny yeah good skiing weather oh my gosh I miss I so I I know some of you know this, but I grew up in the snow, and I miss all things snowy weather. Um, but I'm, I mean, I've also said this, that I feel like snow with kids would just be a disaster. Um, so I am thankful that I don't have to deal with snow with kids, because I just don't think that that would be very fun. But to say that, we are um, up in Missouri. Um, my brother in law is getting married, and we are hoping to make a trip out of it. Um, so later in March, um, we're hopefully going to be taking a trip and driving because COVID and flights, we're not doing that. So we're taking a trip. And we're hoping to uh, go through Denver and hit some snow. So if you have any good places for like tubing and things that you like, if you're in Denver, let me know. Um, that would be fun. But it'll be for them. Lincoln's had some uh, snow experience, but Liberty hasn't really had any. So it'll be fun to see their um reactions to snow and um we're hoping to stay a couple days in that area and have fun play with snow and stuff it's nearly midnight <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> Uh, just a reminder that all my classes are available after the live. I don't take them off of um, YouTube. So if you, obviously, if you, I don't know if you're painting right now or just coming to say hi. If that's the case, hello. Um, but all my classes stay up live. Um, or stay up after the live. So you can paint it later when you're not half asleep. Because I know I am half asleep at midnight. <laughs> if I'm still up. Oh, an announcement that I will probably be making later too is um, over on Patreon, um, we now have our own Discord server. So um, just for patrons, I have a Discord. Um, so if you're a patron and you missed the post, I um, go in and link your Discord. And now we can have like threads of work in progresses. I can help with anything. It's a lot more of a community base than just Patreon because Patreon, the way it works is it's mostly my posts. You can't really post your own work on there. Um, but now I'll have a specific um, community for Patreon um, that's separate from my artist community on Facebook. So if you wanna get work uh, like feedback on your work, um, or just, you know, uh, network and things like that. Um, the discord is a perfect place for that. So in case, um, in case you missed the post on that, I think I'm not really going to do all this, the details. I'm just going to do the outline. Um, cause I can put the details in later with the paint and I don't think that they're really necessary. Maybe I'll put some of the lines. A lot of times my um, traceables, I wanna, say, I wanna say most of the time, I feel like the last two um, were more uh, detailed because they needed to be like the car and the rose. But typically, especially when it comes to nature, um, like 
as long as you get enough on the canvas that you're not afraid to start because sometimes looking at a blank canvas can be really daunting and it's just like oh where do I start um, but just having so like for instance I pretty much just did I don't know if you can see it's very very light I essentially just did the outline of the fish and then like the the tail eye and then the actual eye um, and that's pretty much all I I really want because I'm gonna put the rest of the details in there with the paint and I'm just gonna go over it anyways so there's no point in really putting on all of the rest of the detail but sometimes just getting a just getting it on the canvas is really helpful um, to just like getting out of your head and being like okay I can start now at least for at least for me when I first started painting I was just like I don't I don't want to start on a blank canvas I don't know where to start so um, let me post that if you want it. Um, I believe this is the correct traceable. Let me double check just to make sure before I post it. Okay, yes. So here is, here's the traceable for anyone wanting. And traceables are available to all patrons. So it doesn't matter what tier you're on. Um, it's just a gift to those who support me. Uh, with a large piece like this, I cut around the basic shape and trace it around it. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, yeah, for sure. And that works really well if you're using a panel too, because you know you can't see through panels. Um, but let me take this off. Um, I feel like something like this, it's such a large shape that um, by all means you like you don't need the traceable. But for those who are just you know, you, you don't want to have to worry about proportions or figuring it out for yourself. Um, they just kind of want an easy thing to just, they just want to focus on painting. It's a really good, um, a really good thing to have, but which is why I provide it, but it's not for everyone, obviously. Um, I'm excited to, I'm excited to paint. I oh yeah. Have we done a fish before on this channel? I'm trying to think of a fish. We've done like sea life. Done a turtle, obviously. Behind me. Um, I think I want to do like a. Maybe in the next. I've already finalized everything for the next two months, but I think I might do like a abstracty sort of colorful seahorse. Oh yeah, I did do the koi. You're right. That's right. I did the koi. That was for my Patreon. It's not on the wall right now. Koi. Yeah, I think that's the only fish I've done. But I like doing all sea life. So I think I might do like a colorful seahorse next. It speaks to me. Color. Almost, I'm thinking almost kind of like the, um, kind of like the butterfly. It's kind of like abstracty and like colorful. Um, I really, I, I love that one. It's not my work. Um, I taught somebody else's stuff, um, but it's like one of my favorites that we did. Um, it was when I was like really, really early on um, in my classes, and I thought that one was really fun. But I'd love to do something of that kind of style where it's just like fun and colorful. Yeah. I need to put in a couple more abstracts. I haven't really done a lot of abstracts since I started doing the ones from like a picture other than like uh, my owl and the um, the flowers. I know I'm doing a palette knife one. We've done a couple palette knife classes in our cobalt classes because they've wanted to um, do more like palette knife work. So I know I'm doing one of those in April with them, but I don't think I scheduled, maybe I'll make one of them a palette knife class. We'll see. <laughs> um, I've been really liking the, uh, the realism type of stuff lately. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll add a couple more kind of abstracty ones, or maybe I'll do a special class. That's like. 
live patron only or something like that. Um, let's see, let me see what colors we're gearing up for. What's fun about this type of class is like the background, the background's not going to be as detailed. We're going to kind of um, not blur out the background because it's already blurred out, but we're just going to add color to the background. We're not really going to um, go specifically towards like exactly, you know, what's in the picture for this one. And um, we're really just going to be focusing on the, um, the coral and then the fish. But I still want to have like color in the background. So, because we'll still need that contrast from the white fish. We'll still have to have color. Let's talk about five on Let's see. Okay, so I have here um, white, black, raw umber. Just making sure that I'm getting out the same colors that I wrote down for you guys. Yellow, red, green. Yellow, red, green. Let's see if I think we should have any other colors. That's probably good. can make that with those colors. Okay. I think I'm going to do a burnt umber instead of raw umber because it's a little bit lighter and there's not as much dark colors in here. But you can use either. Okay, I think, I think I'm all ready. Well, we have a few minutes left. Um, let me know if you have any questions before we get started. And I can answer those before, before class. Oh, we also have the Patreon um, art supply giveaway tonight, which I've done all that. We'll do that around announcement time, just before we get started. I hope you are all doing lovely. It's been a very nice, relaxed day. Um, when I first started these, they always felt really hectic and I was nervous and um, it's definitely become a much more <laughs> relaxing thing. <laughs> I've gotten much more into the groove of things and it's not as 
hectic with like the kids. Um, for anyone who um, didn't start with me back like a year, year and a half ago, um, I started, if anybody has watched some of my earlier classes, I started teaching in my kitchen while my kids were napping. Um, and my husband had to be like really quiet over on the computer because you could hear like anything, like even like his typing, you could hear everything. Um, and it was like, it would take me like 30 to 40 minutes to like set up everything in the kitchen and then another like 30 to 40 minutes to tear down, bring it back, you know, put it away. It was, yeah. And back then I was doing lives on Facebook and there was just a ton of spamming. So it was like all day I was just trying to like delete everything and it was, it was hectic and crazy. And I'm so happy that we're on YouTube and it's fantastic and a lot more relaxing <laughs> even though I have three kids now rather than two hi Amy are you new to the channel or are you new to uh, to painting I always like painting with newcomers and if you are new, please let me know because it gives me a little bit more of a heads up of kind of the speed to go. Because sometimes I have a lot of intermediates with me and I can just kind of go my own pace. Um, but sometimes, sometimes if I know I have a lot of new, you know, beginners with me, I'll pace it a little bit differently. Okay, good. Well, welcome. Um, glad to have you here. All right, well, we are gonna turn it over. It's gonna be a little bit of a message and then, um, and then we'll get started, okay? All right. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to another class. I am super excited to get started. Um, so we're gonna be going over some supplies here real quick. Um, we'll have, I have a few announcements and then we'll get straight to painting. Okay. So, uh, to start with, I was gifted, um, this last week, um, a bunch of Frederick's canvas, um, from their website. They were super nice. Um, and they gave me some canvases. So I will be using Frederick's, um, today and probably for the next, I don't know, six or seven months, however long they last me, uh, for my lives classes. So that'll be really fun. Um, I have the traceable linked if you would like to download that it's available for all patreon supporters um, and yeah you can go ahead over there you can use a traceable if not I will be going over just basic shapes uh, during the class um, if you don't want to use it or you want to draw it for yourself which is totally um, an option as well um, I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas stretched canvas from Fredericks um, I will be using Hippie Crafter acrylics. Um, just any acrylics will do, but this is the brand that I'm going to be using um, with a couple others uh, like uh, Lucatex, um, things that I've picked up over the years. Um, and 
that I've run out of <laughs> with Hippie Crafter. Uh, I have my water, paper towel, my palette. I like using a flat palette because I think it's just easiest to um, use. <laughs> Um, and then I have all of my brushes. Um, my brushes are linked below. I have a very simple 15 to $20 kit that I wanted affordable for you guys. And I use that, um, just so that I can use the same things as you do. You do not need to buy, um, you know, super expensive, uh, materials for this. Um, while that is good and they last longer and they're better quality. If you're just getting started, a $15 kit with a variety of brushes on Amazon, they'll work perfectly fine, okay? Um, the one thing I will say, if you are looking into upgrade from that, I would say liner brushes and a hog bristle um, fan brush is the, the two things that I would buy um, with that. Um, and then obviously I would also, um, I use, I use palette knives every time I, every time I teach, every time I paint, um, mostly to mix paint, which is really great because then you don't dirty your water and you don't waste paint in brushes before you even start. Uh, so if you don't have a, um, a palette knife kit, I would highly recommend getting one. Um, I have some other supplies that I have in, you know, listed below, like sponges and things like that, um, which you can, or, you know, you don't have to use, but for now, um, I have my brushes and my palette knife. Um, I may or may not use some sponging for the background, um, if I feel like I need some texture or anything like that, use what you have. You don't have to use exactly what I have, but, um, yeah, just use what you have. I think that is all of the supplies. Um, speaking of palette knife, uh, for my patrons, um, tonight I, we are doing our Patreon art giveaway. It's just another way for me to, uh, thank my patrons for supporting me. Every month I do a patron art giveaway where I give away some supplies and today I'm giving away some palette knives. So let's, uh, skip on over to that. Hello, hello. And I will start this and we will see who wins. Again, this is just for patrons who have their address in their account um, so I can send them some supplies. All right, Kaylee, you are the winner for today. Um, I will go ahead and send all of that over to you. And yeah, thank you so much for your support. Thank you everyone for your support and um, Let's get back to painting. Let's see. Um, okay. So that's that. I will send that out um, within the next week uh, to Kaylee. Thank you everyone for support. And then my other announcement is in Patreon. We now have a Discord that you can get um, networked into. So if you are a Patreon and you are have not linked your Discord, please go and do that. I would love to connect with you more. You can get uh, feedback on artwork, send funny memes, all sorts of things, and be a little bit more of part of our exclusive community. So please do that. And then lastly, if you are on my Facebook, you would have seen me post earlier today, but uh, tomorrow is Tuesday. It is also 2-22-22. It is February 22nd, uh, 2022. So lots of twos, so it's a Tuesday. Um, and I'm having a little, uh, discount for my Patreon. So I am putting a discount for annual memberships to get two months free. Um, so happy Tuesday. It's a sale that's only for tomorrow. Uh, so if you've been wanting to become a Patreon, uh, wanting to become a part of my Patreon and a patron of mine, uh, tomorrow is the way to do it. Um, if you have just signed up, you can switch over to annual tomorrow to get that discount and get two months free. Okay. That is all of my announcements for today. Let's get painting. Um, we are going to go ahead and, uh, we don't need to paint the entire background. Um, like over we could, um, but I think for today we'll paint around it. 
because most of the most of this is white colored um, and if you have a favorite fish that you want to put instead of this fish feel free to do that uh, the thing I like about this and what I would say if you are piss uh, if you are picking another fish I would say to pick a bright colored fish like a white a yellow something that is going to contrast against the background um, something that you'll be able to see against the background um, so yeah that's my that's my advice uh, for that but we're gonna be painting the background and then painting in the fish and yeah let's get started so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab a yellow and my white and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw in or I should say paint in um, we're going to paint in our outline now if you already did this in pencil then you can skip this step um, but I like to do it a lot of the times I like to do the outline in uh, let's see where's my small one I like to do it in paint because paint is very easily um, painted over so if you mess up or anything like that you don't have to worry about erasing it or whatever the case um, are the classes free what classes the all my classes on Facebook are free the classes in my patreon are free to patrons so they're exclusive to m those who support me in patreon so if you are a uh, magenta level which is seven dollars and up um, US dollars then you'll have access to my entire archive of classes that I've ever taught for patreon so if you think about it you know <laughs> divide seven dollars by however many you can paint in a month <laughs> it's a pretty good deal <laughs> and you can cancel at any time so unless of course you do the um the the yearly membership in which case you get two months free all right so what i am doing is i'm just mixing some yellow and white and the reason i'm adding white to it is because it doesn't need to be super bright um, mine's going to be a little bit brighter than yours, um, but that's because I am on, um, I'm on camera and sometimes if it's not dark enough, you won't be able to see it. So go ahead and mix your yellow with some white and then add water to it to get a fairly liquid consistency. Um, what is Patreon? Patreon, okay. Um, so Patreon is essentially a site where people can support artists or creators. Uh, so in that interest, um, I am a creator. I create content, I create tutorials and classes, and um, uh, I have art challenges and Q and A's and traceables and all sorts of things. Um, so Patreon is a site that uh, I am a creator in that site and um, I think I have about 150 people who support me as an artist. Uh, it supports the live classes that, it, you know, it, it supports me as an artist to be able to do live classes and teach from home, from, you know. Um, so I hope that makes sense and it answers your question. Um, I can link, let me link to just my normal Patreon. Um, it's just a community of people who support, um, me as an artist and a teacher. Um, so that's my Patreon in case anybody is wondering. Um, yeah. Okay, so for let's move on to this. Um, okay, so for this, you want to space out your your fish. Your fish takes up a majority of the uh, of the picture. Now I moved mine a little bit in so I can see the whole outline, so I'm not cutting off the. Um, 
so I'm not cutting off the fins. I kind of wanted to have like a whole, a whole fish. Um, personally, this is so that I can, you know, put it on postcards and make stickers and whatever it was that I want to do later. Um, but if you wanted to kind of go off the picture, that's totally fine. You can just move it. I wanted mine all the way on the picture. So I just made sure, um, to kind of move it in a little bit when I was initially doing my sketch outline, um, with my traceable. So for here, you want to just figure out where you're going to put it. Um, for me, because I'm doing it inside, I wanted it a little bit further from the edge. So you could go here and then, you know, where, where, wherever it is that you want it to stop, you could put two dots. Um, and then you're going to kind of tilt it. So the line of the fish is going at a little bit of an angle. So if you wanted to draw in a line that you can go based off of, that's totally fine. You don't have to. Um, other than that, essentially you have two bits. You have two T's. You have one here and then you have one here. And they're about the same. The top goes a little bit further up. So if you have this line here that goes all the way across, you have a few inches here, and this will this will depend on the size of your canvas, but for my 11 by 14, it's a few inches. And then that amount is about the size of the bottom one. And the top one goes a little bit further than that. So that will help you kind of get the sizing of it all. And then just, it doesn't have to look exactly like it, just go based off of that, um, just kind of eyeball it. It's a fish. Fish are all different sizes and shapes. Um, so kind of just eyeball it and go from there. And you can just meet all of those points that you've already created. I hope that makes sense. And then down below, there's a little bit of a, of a, um, of a yellow. I can, I'm going to just go in here. It's yellow. Might as well do an underpainting of, <laughs> of yellow, right? <coughs> and then we're going to come down here. And it comes out to a point, almost like a dolphin or like a kissy fish. And then your eye, sorry, I just hit my computer. Um, your eyes, your two eyes, there's, there's like the actual eye, the fish eye, and then there's like the tail eye. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, the tail eye is in the top half of the top section and it's to just to the left of that area and then this eye you know just just eyeball it <laughs> corny jokes um just eyeball it and um you can put it in we can always create um, more details later. For right now, we're just getting the outline of it all, okay? All right, so hopefully um, everyone has a little bit at least their main outline. Um, we're gonna have some fun with some colors. So for the background, it's not gonna be exactly what it is in the picture. It's just gonna be color for the most part. We're gonna focus on, I wanna focus on the fish and like this kind of coral leafy area over here. And if you wanna add some textures up on the bottom, you can, um, but for the most part, it's just gonna be color in the background, okay? Um, for something to note is the tail is a little bit see-through, so I'll probably go over a little bit of this area 
so that I can come back and have a very see-through look um, to the tail. And I'll show you how to do that. It's actually a really fun thing. Um, I did it. What, what did I do it on? It wasn't, it wasn't the, I think it was a different class I did. Um, I did fins and it was really fun to like make it see through. Anyways, I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Let's get our green out. And this is the green that I'm using. If you have a green that is closer to like this, like maybe a hooker's oak or like a hooker's green or like a, um, just a more earthy green, use that. Don't use what I'm using. <laughs> this is pretty much the only green that I have right now. I need to just buy another one. Um, but this is, okay, it looks blue in that one. This is, this is closer to what it is. It's a very bright green. Um, but something that you can do if let's say that this is the only green that you have and you're like, how the heck do I make a, you know, a, that colored green with this bright green? Well, you're in luck. I'll show you how. Um, if you're going to get out your brown. Oh, I forgot to go over colors that I had. <laughs> um, white. If you haven't gotten your colors out yet. White, black, red, yellow, green, and brown. I forgot to go over colors. <laughs> Silly me. Uh, but that's okay. Um, the brown that you can use, it can be either burnt umber or raw umber. It doesn't really matter. Um, I will say that the only really difference I've noticed with them is that um, one is lighter than, uh, lighter than the other. So your burnt umber is going to be lighter. I had like a giant chunk of um, dry paint in there. It wasn't coming out. Okay. And we'll be using brown later too. So you just get out, you know, fairly good amount. Um, let's see. So with this green, I want it to be a yellowish green, right? Well, right now it's a very, like, almost like a neon green. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add yellow. I'll probably need a little bit more yellow. Maybe not that much. I'm going to add yellow and a little bit of brown. Now start easy with the brown. Um, uh, what shade of red? I just have, uh, mine says scarlet, but just your primary red. Usually... Usually when I have, um, this might be closer to like a cadmium, cadmium red. It's like a little bit on the orangier side, but honestly, I'm really all about having the colors and then being able to tweak them. Um, unless I'm using a specific blue, like phthalo blue versus ultramarine blue, I think is the only really distinction that I like to make. Um, other than that, just use what you have, whatever, um, whatever color. Okay, I had a lot of green here, so I need a lot more brown. So I'm just going to play around with these colors. And I had quite a bit of green. So I'm going to split that in half. Um, leave that for a little bit of a lighter. Uh, say the colors again. Yes. So I have black, white, and then um, red, yellow, green, and brown. Those are the f those are the four colors. Um, other than black and white that we'll be using. And the brown specifically is burnt umber. I have pale green, medium yellow, and scarlet. But you don't have to use the same exact colors. They can be different, like, shades, if that makes sense. But these are, this is what it is. Um, 
I'm going to add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more brown. You're welcome. Alright, so this is a nice uh, green, a nice kind of dirty green, I'd like to say. Um, and then I'm going to get out some black. We're just going to make a couple different colors of green. Um, and then we'll be able to put all of that in the background. Um, so I'm getting uh, a little bit of this green that I have. And I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. see where it goes. Just a little bit of a darker color. I like that. And I'm not putting like any specific proportion of it. I'm just putting a little bit in and see where, you know, see where it takes you. Um, and if yours look a little bit different than mine, sometimes the coloring is a little bit off on this camera. Like this isn't, this isn't as dark in person as it is on the palette. So you choose the colors that you want to use for your painting. Okay. Um, and if they're not exactly like mine, that's okay. Just choose roughly three different colors. Um, three different colors, three or four different colors. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll make a little bit more of a yellowish one that I can use at the top. I'll just do it over here. I'm just roughly just kind of coming up with these colors. They don't have to be exact. Maybe I'll even add a little bit of white to this one to lighten it up. Um, something with colors you have to kind of just remember is that adding white or black will mess with the saturation of anything. Um, so you have to be careful with using white and black because um, it'll lower the saturation. It'll make it'll gray it out, which sometimes you want. Um, but that's kind of why I started. I started off first by doling the color with um, brown versus changing the saturation and taking um, like darkening it or um, whitening it up with white um, before I got the colors that I wanted. Um, but yeah. Okay. I think I am excited for these colors. Once you have three or four different colors that you want to use for your greens, um, I'm going to figure out, I think, for my red, I'm going to just kind of make a general uh, line where this is going to be, just so I don't go over with my green. It's just this area-ish. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll even do some palette knife work to the background. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> okay. So once you have your colors, you're going to take a... I like using a filbert um, because it's round and I feel like it's just I something I, I like using it. If you don't have a large filbert and all you have is a, like a flat brush or something like that, that's totally fine. Get out your large brush that you want to, not too large because you still want to be able to get in these little spots, um, but larger brush. That we'll be using for the background. Um... 
Okay, hopefully you have all your colors. I'm going to dip my brush about halfway into water just to get it a little wet. And we're going to start just adding on these colors. I'm going to start with the darks under here. Get in a little bit with my black. my dark colors and I'll start weaving in some of these light colors As long as this is wet, you'll be able to um, blend it a little bit. I'm going to come in with some of these brighter colors. I'm just going into the different colors, just gently adding. It looks really dark on camera. I don't know why. It, I need to brighten it up. It's not that bright on, on the, in real life. <laughs> Give me one second so I can fix this. Um, I wonder why it looks so dark. a little better. Still not true to the colors, but that's okay. We'll be able to add a little bit more texture to the background, at least for like this part here. Um, once it's dried a little bit. stay in the lighter areas. Alright, so I have a lot of darkness on my brush, so I am going to brighten it up by rinsing out my brush so that when I go into these other colors, um, I'm not tainting them. <laughs>
gonna keep some lighter colors up here. And if you wanted to follow it perfectly, um, you'll go back to darkness up here. And like I said before, I'm going to go over the tail area. So that I can create a fun, like kind of see-through effect. If you wanted to, um, if you wanted to keep that shape, um, then you don't have to go over it, and you could just create it in a different way, however you want to do it. apologize if you can hear my <laughs> my brush strokes really loudly like the mic is like it's like right there <laughs> I'm trying not to hit it with my brush right now itty bit of living space alright I'm just gonna put this light color on the whole top of my canvas. And anytime you're going back into another color, for instance, I made this transition. Um, I had the light on my brush because I was doing it over here. I had the light on my brush. As soon as I start going into that dark, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of dark on my brush. And it'll help it blend in. What is your brush called again? Uh, this is a filbert. It's called a filbert brush. I used to say it without the T, thinking that it was, <laughs> thinking that it was silent, like a filber, filber brush. But filbert. It was named after a guy. His last name was. I think his last name was Filbert. So maybe it was his first name. I don't remember. But essentially it looks like a flat brush except on the tip of it it's kind of like an oval oval shape Eh, 
and sometimes to help blend I'm just doing basic crisscrosses so it's like a um, it's like a figure eight in a way I'm doing this but where I'm touching it is an X um, so I'm touching it here and then I, li I lift off and then I touch it and then I lift off touch the canvas lift off touch the canvas lift off and it's a very quick it's a very quick motion they can be small motions and you can vary the how much pressure you put on it um, but you can get some very nice um, blending effects with that I use it all the time to blend I'm going to paint the other side because I always forget this side because I can't see it. Alright, so we have some fun colors. I think I'm going to come back here and kind of maybe lighten up that area a bit. I'm going to rinse out my brush, go in with some of this lighter color. I can come in and lighten it up a bit. can even start putting in some yes I'm I'm using I've, I haven't changed my brush yet right now I'm just working on just adding a little bit of texture And um, we'll want we we'll want to make sure that most of this is dry before we go in. Um, I just did a quick in the bottom just to brighten it up a little bit. Um, but as soon as I started seeing that uh, some of the the other layer started to come off, I'm just going to let that dry, and I can come back and put in more of that um, more of those textures. And I also want to go over this area because it was a very it was a bit thin, which this is already dry, so I might. I might even do that right now um, and add a little bit more just add another layer it can be a thin layer I just don't want to I just don't want to see my um, my brush marks and since green tends to be a little bit more on the translucent side, I just want to make sure that I'm not seeing any of that. And it also gives you a chance to kind of go back in and fix any coloring choices that you didn't like. Or any blendings that you want to try again.
just adding some different colors and different areas, trying to create a little bit more of an interest in the background. I might add a little bit more to the top here. But I think I'll need to wait until that's more dry because I don't think this is, this isn't ready for another coat. All right. So while that is all drying, I'm going to mix up my red color. So I'm just going to grab my red, just plain old red. I think it's closest to a cadmium red, but we're going to be changing the hue of it anyways. So you're gonna get some red and I'm gonna put some brown in it. And we're gonna make a little bit of a maroon color. A little bit of brown and maybe even a little bit of black. I think what I actually might do is if you have a deep dark purple you want to use that'll really richen up the like the deep red color of it uh, if you don't have a deep purple you could use like a phthalo blue phthalo phthalo I recently heard that it was called phthalo blue and I was like I've been calling it phthalo blue for my entire life have I been lied to <laughs> have I been wrong this whole time um, anyways, I have a very deep purple that I'm just going to add a little bit of this to. <coughs> Let's see if I can richen up the red color. this color. I'm not going to take some of that and add just a little bit of white to it. See where we're at. Sometimes adding white to it will let you really see what like what kind of a color it is because sometimes if the color is too dark it's hard to see what color it is. <clears throat> it's like if I were to add white to this color. Let me see. Let me see. See how purple it is? But when it's so dark, it's like really hard to see what color it is. But anyways, so that is this color. I think I like that color. Okay. So we'll add white to a little bit more of this. Have our light color our dark color and then we'll put some reflections on some of the leaves. We could even, if you wanted to, I don't know if I'll do it for this class, um, this would be a really really fun, um, uh, what happened to the sound? The sound is fine here. So I'm still on the same input. Can you guys hear me? Fine? Am I okay? <clears throat> Let me know because my, in my input hasn't changed. 
Okay, good. Okay, perfect. Okay. Giving me a scare. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I have... I have my two reds. Uh, what would be a really fun, um, if for anyone who joined me for, let's see, do I have it in the back? Um, for the balloon class, where it's like you put it on really thick and then you layer it over each other. Um, that would be a really fun thing to do here. Um, and I think I'm going to do that. Let me show you an alternative way to do it. For those of you who who either don't have a palette knife or don't want to do that, um, but it's going to add a really fun texture to this painting that I think would it'll just kind of make it pop out a little bit. Um, so with that, we're going to need to first we're going to do a base coat of this red. Of uh, uh, we're actually going to do a base coat of a dark red. So I'm going to get this black and add just the tiniest bit of this red. It's going to look like a kind of dark reddish brown color. And that'll be our base so that the colors can really shine through. So for this, um, for this section right here, um, I'm allowing it to not have a like clean, like line. Like I almost want a jagged line here. Because we are, we are talking about a plant here. This is a plant. And... They don't have perfect lines. Do the bottom. Um, are the palette knives for just mixing colors? No, I use them all the time for other things too. So I'm going to actually show you, um, a way to implement it into this painting. Um, obviously if you don't have one, you don't have to, I'm going to show you a way to, um, a way I would do this without the palette knife. But if you have a palette knife and you would like to use it, I love using palette knives and I don't know why I haven't. Um, put more in to my classes, but uh, it's just, it's fine. <laughs> I like doing it though. Um, Alright, so here's kind of, it's kind of hard to see because it's still wet and it's a dark color, um, but that's, that's the base coat for that. Um, 
I'm going to get a smaller brush real fast just so that I can go a little bit closer to my fish. Alright, so if I did not have a palette knife and I, or I didn't want to use one, how I would do the, um, actually let's, you know what, let's finish the green first before we do that. Let's let, let that dry. We'll finish the, um, the green first and then we'll come back to the coral. How about that? I actually don't know if it's coral. It might be just an underwater leaf. The coral reef, not necessarily coral. So at this point, I'm just kind of fixing any um, any coloring that I want to change. And I think that was all that I wanted to do other than the stuff at the bottom. So if you have um, if you want to have a little bit of texture at the bottom, you can go in with, um, your filbert, just the same brush that you've been using and add almost like grass type, um, lines. Just to add a little bit of texture. I'm just doing a bunch of lines. Just to add some texture. It looks a little bit more like leaves. Or like a grass of some sort. You could either you could even come in with some some brown. It's kind of a little bit more of a abstracty way of doing it, and I think that that's okay. You just gotta kind of let go a little bit. Maybe add a couple a couple light ones. Keep kind of putting on some of the layers. I'm just playing with the colors. Maybe make a maybe make a tan. If you wanted to, you could get a um, like a fan brush and maybe put some texture on the canvas that way, just in this area. Just 
kind of brushing it in areas. Just have fun with it, kind of let go a little bit. This is what mine looks like up close. But from far away, it looks very much. Again, this is the background and we're not focusing on it, okay? Um, and you can, because this is like, um, you can always come back and kind of fiddle with some of this if you wanted to. Like, don't feel like you need to do it right now. Add a little bit of texture up here. Maybe I'll even add some texture on top that's a little bit more of a yellowy color. Again, just playing with the colors. come over here with some some black darken up can I add just a little bit of character to it make sure to add that on this side I think that's all I'm gonna do to the green I think I like it it's just enough to give it, um, to give the fish a home, but not enough to take away from it. Because it's not the focal point. It's just the background. Okay, so here's the fun part. For this little um, thing, if you don't want to use a palette knife, here's a way that you can um, give it texture without doing that. You're just going to take your, I'm taking a small silver brush getting my red and giving it just fairly quickly giving it little leaves and blending it down And then when I come back over it, you can come back with some darker colors. Blend it in a little bit. And then when you come to this section right here, you'll come in with your lighter color and give some texture that way. You see that? Does that make sense? So you're just slowly adding on bits. I'm using I'm using another filbert. You could use a larger round brush if you wanted to. That would also be fine. For those wanting to use a palette knife, what you'll do is you'll grab a chunk and you will Put on some texture and come back behind it with a brush and blend it in. So it's like the same process, but you get like a fun kind of texture on it. I think I'm going to leave the texture part of it for the stuff that's closer though to bring attention to it. 
and I'm just going to focus right now on getting kind of the background leaves kind of in all sorts of colors Remember not to get rid of all your dark. So there's a dark spot that's like right here. Um, and we want that darkness so that when we come back with our highlights and our other colors, it'll, they'll pop. So I'm going to pref I'm going to put black in the corner because I know that that's got more of that dark color. Blend it with some light color. And because there's so much texture in this area, I'm not trying to blend it perfectly. I'm being fairly rough with my blend and just allowing it to take shape. And here I'm coming back with some, some lighter red color. And over that dark, and because I have that dark, I'm able to see the red. So let me pull it closer. See it? So because I went darker, I'm able to see that like extra layer that I have. And I think I'm gonna do the palette knife as like some last touches. The brush technique I'm using right now is I'm just laying on the color. Um, I'm not doing any sort of special technique. I'm just sort of dabbing on. I'm just sort of dabbing on the color. Because I want, I want all this texture to show. So I'm focusing on the outer edge first and then slowly making my way in. These are a bunch of little leaves, essentially. There's another like kind of dark area here that you want to show.
So I'm almost using it as a stippler. But so essentially I'm so with this brush I'm going I'm pushing down on it and then I'm pulling down and off but in a stipple motion. But I'm not just going straight forward and straight back. It's a stipple in a direction. Because I'm using the roundness of the brush to create um, like the leaf sort of shape. Now I'm going to go back with my palette knife and add a little bit more texture. And then you can add a little bit of white in some of the highlighted areas. Just little bits here and there. Are there different palette knives? Yes, there are There are many different palette knives. I'm just using the smallest one that I have. It's kind of a small diamond shape. There are lots of different shapes of palette knives. All right, once you have a good amount of texture on there, we're gonna leave it, we're gonna let it sit, we're gonna let it dry. Um, and then we are going to focus on our fish. We are going to do a general uh, coat of like kind of a grayish white. So I'm going to um, add the tiniest bit of black and brown to my white just to offset the color ever so slightly. And this is so that we can come in with some highlights a little bit later and we'll be able to see them. So again, it's mostly white ever so, ever so slightly off by just adding a touch of brown and a touch of black. Apparently there was a tiny bit of red on my palette knife. That's okay, we're going with the flow. All right, so I'm gonna take my large filbert a large filbert brush and I'm going to cover my entire fish with this.
realized I went over my I don't want to go over my um my fish eye here so I'm just getting some clean brush and water and wiping it away I don't want to lose the location that I have Where did I get my brushes? I got my brushes from Amazon. Um, I believe they are in a link in the description. You can also go to my Amazon shop. Um, I have all of these supplies that I either use or recommend um, in, in my shop. And that is definitely in the description below. All right, while this is still fairly wet, I'm going to take some white and put in some white here on this area, kind of where the, the tail comes in. Trying to get an idea of where it's all going. All right. Put some white here, and I'll blend that in. Just while it's still while it's still wet, might as well. And then I'm going to get a smaller brush and put white on the mouth.
Alright, so I've gotten a little bit of a darker shade and I'm just going and blending it in if it's still wet. If it's not still wet then you can skip this step and we will add it later. I just have a little bit there. Just enough to give me some definition. And most of this most of this is brought in by the fact that this is pure white and this isn't. Blend that a little bit. Okay. Um, now is the last chance that you have to kind of fix any of the background. Um, I think I like the background. Um, uh, when, and when I say last chance, I mean like last chance within class time because we have about 40 minutes left and I want to dedicate that to the fish. Um, you can add like some of these other like white things in the background if you want or more grass. Um, but you can also do that later. You don't have to do that right now. So I think what I'm going to do is focus on the fish. I'm going to go ahead and get some yellow. And we're just going to go straight in with this yellow and figure out where we want it to go. Uh, there's some, I'm just going to start with the left side and I'm just going to grab my pure yellow using my filbert brush. And what's nice about using a filbert brush is that um, I can go really thin if I need to or I can go kind of thick and fat. I have a tiny bit of water so that it goes on smoothly. So this line goes all the way there. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of a tail here just so I know where to put my lines. And the shadows are going to be a little bit in the green to brown category because of it's because it's a white fish it's going to be reflecting its surroundings so you can make a little bit of a darker color by adding brown and green to it There's also almost like a reflection here. So I'm still just working on the f on the fin. Or like the, the tail right here. Just so I can figure out where to put this line. So it goes down, it goes across this fin, or like the back tail, and then keeps a thin line in adjacent to this one, but it goes like fat. It goes really fat.
and it ends up connecting with this one. So I'm just going line by line. Again, I have just my pure yellow and a little bit of water so it goes on smooth. What's nice about doing um, it this way is that because you have that bright, that white on there, um, because you have the white on there, the yellow ends up becoming really bright. And something I forgot to do is with the white, you'll want to add your little um, little white um, I don't know like little mohawk things. that are on the top so that when you go over it with your yellow it'll pop so I'm just gonna add some of those and I'm gonna get a different brush because this brush is not liking the it's not wanting to go very thin That is close enough. So I'm going to add more of this yellow here. And I want to come over here and add the fin. So this part, I went a little bit too far. This part's supposed to be white. Apologize for the music outside if you can hear that um, the fire station uh, sounds like they're having a party out there. <laughs> um. Alright, there's a little bit of a nook here. Alright, so this one pretty much comes straight down. kind of goes up into the back I need more yellow
And then there's like a yellow, uh, like thin line atop the cross or up the on top <laughs> across the top. There you go. Starts about here. that and there's one more that comes um, across like the middle of the eye you're welcome have a great night Amy all right and then it comes down here You'll notice it kind of goes like over the eye and it's what makes the eye look like it's kind of popping out. I'm gonna do, while all of that yellow dries, I'm going to do the, um, the tail. So what you're gonna do is you're going to get some white and water. You want to make sure you have a fairly good uh, water ratio. And we're just going to build it up in layers. So figure out where you want, where you want it. You can pull it in. going to get rid of some of my end and because you're working with such a loose translucent um, it can be highly manipulated so I can even wipe off my brush and do little lines And I'm wiping off my, my brush every time I go in.
but it's a really fun technique. And once you get the hang of it, it's it's fairly easy. You just have to have barely anything on your brush. And then you can come back in and add a little bit more to the base. You can add it in different areas. I'm going to come in here and add more to the base. And I'm just adding it in little strokes and that helps create that fish tail look. There's a little bit of some yellow hue at the very edge. You can add that if you want. Um, I'm going to come in here with some texture. So you can do this with a fan brush or you can do it with a large brush that like breaks apart. That maybe it's an older brush. I like to use this one. It's an old flat brush that I use for texture. It's, it's uh, um, just kind of breaks apart easily. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to create a color that's a little bit darker than this to kind of create some of those fun lines. And I'm going to use some white, a little bit of brown, maybe a tad bit of my green. And I think I need to darken it down with just the tiniest bit of black. So I'm going to get out a little bit more black. tiny bit of black to gray it out a bit. just a little bit of white to that because I think it might be just a little bit too dark. Most of the time it looks lighter on your palette than it does on the canvas. So it's better to go a little bit lighter and you can always darken it than for it to be too dark. I'm going to grab some of this color in my old brush. And I'm 
just going to add some texture. I'll probably, so I think I have to go a little bit darker. It's kind of hard to see it. I'm kind of try to think about going in like a line in the shape of the fish. And I'm going right over the yellow because I'm going to come back over the yellow. And it will tint it. So you're just giving it texture, kind of giving it those lines. I had some red in my brush, so I want to get rid of that. This red is really liking finding its way onto my <laughs> onto my brush. Alright, I'm gonna use this same color to give some gills. There's like a gill right here, so I'm gonna just give some um some shadow in the different places. And then just give some white highlights in the other areas. I'm going to go over this eye section over here with white and then we'll color in the center with black. And 
and as I'm just realizing it's not a perfect circle. So don't make it a perfect circle. <laughs> I'm going to go back over the yellow spots with another coat of my watery yellow. This will brighten it up. as well as tint all of the areas that we went over it to that more yellow color. When you get to the part over on the left, or sorry, the right, um, you'll go kind of up on the gill a little bit. We get to have a little bit more fun. We get to grab some black. Maybe put a little bit of white in it so it's not so black. But we do want it to be a dark color. You can take either a flat brush or your filbert. Just make sure that it's uh, the, the bristles are flat on it. And you're going to go around and add like a black line essentially, but it's gonna be a textured black line. And you can add some texture to the top here. I'm just kind of dabbing All the places where I see I need to add it.
and I'm following it around the eye portion. And I'm also giving the eye a little bit of definition. And continuing that up. Alright, with barely any black in your brush and a good amount of water that's a kind of like brushed out, you can create some fin lines. Just by doing this. It just gives a little bit of texture Also giving a line around this and we're almost done so just give me a couple more minutes got to give a little bit of texture to this area And there is a fin that's right here that's like kind of, you're seeing it at an angle. Alright, and I think the last thing that we need to do is add our black uh, eyes so there's one that's right here Trying to add a little bit more of that. A little bit of a darker line, I feel like.
There's a black line here at the tail. that put that in We have the round dot here. Yeah. I think with a soft wash, I'm going to add just a little bit of some color down here and in some other places maybe. Just so it's not it's not flat but I think that is pretty good we add a little bit of white this area but yeah you can take as long as you need to finish out all the details thank you so much for joining me I'm going to sign mine probably in the left corner and um, yeah I appreciate you guys so much for joining me um, make sure to check out my Facebook page and um, my Instagram. I am trying to get to 1,000 um, Instagram followers by the end of February. And I think I have a little less than 100 less to go. So I'm super excited for that. Uh, so if you haven't followed me over on Instagram, uh, feel free to do that. And um, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. It was fun painting with you. And we'll see you in the next one. Alright. Have a great night, guys.